हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल so good evening everyone i am riya tatwal doing phd at iit kharagpur under the supervision of professor sudeep mishra in the department of computer science and engineering today we all are here to discuss the assignment question of week 4 as well as i am going to give a brief summary of all the topic which were discussed in the lectures of week 4 before that i am going to discuss the topics which were asked in the previous meeting Uh, yeah i was asked to uh, discuss about uh, the nfc protocol uh, that is near field communication protocol so this near field communication protocol is designed uh, for the communication of devices which are in close proximity uh, of each other basically uh, this is designed for the communication of uh, radio frequency identification devices mm-hmm. that is for the rfid tags and reader this principle works on the uh, this uh, protocol works on the principle of, uh, please mute yourself uh, this protocol work on the principle of magnetic induction the reader that is the rfid reader emit an electric current and as we have studied in physics that with the uh, electric current some magnetic field also generate so with that magnetic uh, current magnetic field generates which cover the space between the rfid reader as well as the rfid tag on the rfid tag uh, there will be a similar kind of coil which will interact with the magnetic field which was generated due to the current which was emitted by the rfid reader due to this communication uh, the electrical impulses will generate and these electrical impulses will uh, 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 take the data which is uh, present over this rfid tag and this can be any uh, identification number uh, or it can be any kind of information so uh, these rfid devices are of two types basically uh, first one is passive devices and second one is active devices so these passive devices uh, are the devices uh, which can uh, which are uh, which uh, which contain the information for reading uh, for example these are only the rfid tags which are present over the various objects for example in your notebook soaps or anything it can be present on any object uh, which are in the market however your are uh, active devices are the devices uh, which can uh, read your uh, uh, um, that information as well as these devices can provide uh, the information for reading so smartphones because smartphones can uh, scan the tag also and it can also provide the qr code for scanning so smartphone can act as active device uh, now these passive devices uh, use the energy of the reader they don't have their own energy whereas your active devices have their own inner own power or our own energy now uh, in week 4 uh, lectures we have discussed the various application of wireless sensor networks wait for a minute yeah. so we have um, consider we have uh, discussed the application of wireless sensor networks so first application of wireless sensor network is target tra- uh, tracking so wireless sensor networks are used for tracking the movement of a target or an object and these tracking can be uh, of three types first one is your push based formulation tracking second one is your pole based formulation and third one is your guided formulation so in case of your push based formulation the sensors which are present in the field are going to detect the movement of a target 
and uh, after that these sensors are going to transmit the information to the sync node and on the basis of that information we are going to track the movement or track the location of the target however in case of your pole based formulation uh, the sensors are not going to transmit the information to the sync they are only they only send this information whenever a query was sent by the sync to the uh, the sensors these sensors uh, uh, report the presence of the target and store that information in their uh, storage and whenever the, the sync node asks for the information they are going to send that information to the sync node and on the basis of that information we are going to track that where uh, your target is uh, and the third type is your guided formulation in case of your guided formulation there are some nodes which are called your beacon nodes these beacon nodes provide the trajectory uh, that where this uh, your target can be and on the basis of that trajectory your sensor nodes are going to follow that information and are going to track your target now second application is your in agriculture so your wireless sensor networks can be used in your agriculture for Uh, uh predicting the quality of soil whether uh, the nutrients that uh, is required for the uh, cultivation of a particular crop are present in the soil whether the humidity level is accurate or not uh, all those features we can use uh, we can detect or predict with the help of sensor network second we can use sensor networks in order to detect the intruders for example uh, there are chances that cattle may uh, walk inside your um, agriculture fields so in order to detect their movements we can use sensors and uh, detect their movement in the agriculture fields uh, apart from that um, apart from your sensors we can use multimedia sensor multimedia networks for example along with your sensor we can use uh, your cameras also your cell phones also in order to uh, detect these movements uh, into the agriculture field for example consider an example that if a sensor that your ultrasonic sensor detects some movement in your agriculture field right on the basis of that movement that uh, sense uh, the actuator will activate your camera which is linked to your actuator so uh, the camera will turn on and on uh, then the video which is captured by the camera uh, then some image processing will be done and we can detect whether some uh, cattle or whether some intruder is in your uh, agriculture field or not and there is no need to keep camera turn on for a long while because uh, it will require more energy so it is better than whenever your sensor will uh, detect some movement then uh, it will turn on your camera and further we can detect the movement of some kettles or any uh, anyone else yeah after that we also use your wireless sensor networks in nano networks so nano networks are the networks where our devices uh, or the components which are used are of size nanometers right so for their communication uh, we can use a wireless sensor network and uh, the communication uh, uh, that is used in nano networks uh, is of range 0.1 to 10 terahertz further your wireless sensor networks can also be used in uh, your uh, water acoustics uh, underwater acoustics uh, to detect the movement of your marine life to uh, predict what is the uh, state of whether there is uh, some pollution in your oceans or anything any application you uh, can use uh, your sensor networks in your oceans also so um, but in underwater in case of your underwater uh, there are some problems because your sen uh, sensors will be mobile there and there are some signals also which will affect their communication so uh, it will be difficult to um, uh, employ uh, sensor networks in your oceans uh, so in order to detect uh, some um, movements in the ocean or uh, some in order to track objects in the ocean there are different types of algorithms which can be used uh, these algorithms are discussed uh, 
uh, in your lectures first one is three dimensional localization second one is your high speed auv based silent localization and third one is your opportunistic localization now the next topic is wireless sensor network coverage so what do you mean by coverage coverage is to uh, com uh, cover the com uh, com complete uh, or entire field which we want to sense completely right and now what is connectivity connectivity means all the nodes which are present in that field should be interconnected to each other such that the whole area or the whole field is covered uh, so uh, yeah so sensor coverage studies uh, how to deploy or activate sensors to cover the monitoring area so it will depend upon your sensor placement that where exactly to place the sensors in that field and second one is your density control it means that how many sensor that we have to place in order to uh, cover the complete area so we can use uh, either your static sensor or your mobile sensor in order to cover the particular area now uh, yeah coverage um, so coverage determine how well the sensing field is monitored or tracked by the sensors so in order to determine uh, uh, it depend uh, we can use uh, either static sensor or mobile sensor it will depend upon the application which you are going to use so in case of your static sensor we just have to take care that where to deploy the sensors and how many sensors we need to deploy however in case of your mobile sensor apart from your uh, number of sensor that we need to deploy and uh, the place where we need to deploy we ha also have to plan the trajectory because these sensors are not static they are moving so on the basis of their movement we have to consider whether if their movements uh, can result uh, to a dead zone or not so we also have to consider that thing uh, so i am after that um, uh, the coverage algorithm proposed are either centralized distributed and localized so in case of your distributed uh, algorithms the nodes or the sensors which are present uh, compute their position by communicating with their neighbor only neighbor nodes only however in case of your centralized the data is collected by the central point and after that on the basis of the data which is collected the global map is created and it is decided whether the area, uh, whether the field or the area is completely covered or not uh, the third one is your localized uh, localized algorithm are a special type of distributed algorithm we are only a subset of nodes not complete uh, the sensors uh, who, which are present in that field are used however a subset of nodes are uh, will participate for sensing communication and computation so in case of your coverage problem uh, your coverage problem are basically divided into three categories first one is your area coverage second one is your point coverage and third one is your barrier coverage so in case of your area coverage the main um, aim is to uh, cover the complete area in an energy efficient manner second uh, point is uh, that uh, the coverage uh, of uh, that area should be uh, the connection between the uh, sensors will be random it's not like uh, we are going to use a particular set of sensors or if we, um, we are going to use only a particular set of trajectory between the sensor it should be random and the third one is uh, a network is connected if any active node can communicate with any other uh, any uh, other active node present in that field uh, now the point coverage in case of your point coverage uh, the objective is to cover a set of points so it can be a random point coverage or it can be a deterministic point coverage now the third one is your barrier coverage so barrier coverage can be a uh, one barrier co uh, coverage second uh, can be two barrier coverage and third can be a uh, k barrier coverage your one barrier coverage means only one sensor is enough at least one sensor is enough to cover uh, that barrier area however in case of your two barrier coverage at least two sensors are required to cover that area uh, and in uh, k barrier coverage 
at least k sensors are required to cover that area now the optimality conditions since we are studying about uh, coverage that we are uh, we have to cover the area such that there will be no dead zone so the optimality condition will be uh, that we have to use minimum number of sensors and the area that is the intersection area between the two sensors will be minimum and uh, the coverage that will be provided by the number of sensors will be maximum and there should be no dead zone so uh, the algorithm that can be used uh, uh, in order to provide optimality condition is uh, ogdc you can check this algorithm in your videos and the optimality conditions are for example if a and b are already placed in the field and now you have to place this c sensor in that field then optimality condition will be this intersection area should be least and second thing will be this will be uh, this area should be equal to this area then it is going to cover the whole scenario a whole field yeah now uh, the topic is stationary wireless sensor network so stationary wireless sensor networks as the name suggest uh, the networks cannot move uh, or the sensor nodes which are present in this networks are stationary they are not able to move so the problem in stationary wireless sensor network is that consider uh, this scenario where uh, this network is connected to this network only because uh, with the help of this node only and further this network is connected with uh, this network with the help of this node only so if the failure occur at this point and this point then this will lead to the split of the networks right so what is the solution what can we do in order to improve this the solution is to use mobile sensor network uh, why mobile uh, wireless sensor network because mobile wireless sensor networks are self configure self heal uh, self optimize and self protect so if uh, some failure will occur then they are going to heal uh, automatically and that is what it means self heal so uh, you if you want to learn that it is chop c h o p configure heal optimize and protect now what are the components uh, of your mobile wireless sensor network the first one is your mobile sensor nodes mobile sync and data nodes uh, mobile sensor nodes as the name suggests these sensor nodes are mobile they are not stationary they are uh, they can move uh, anywhere in the field second one is your mobile sync so um, first of all sync is the node which will collect the data from your sensor network and further transmit it to the network so your mobile sync means that your sync node is also uh, capable of moving it moves in your field and data mules data mules are the carrier nodes so these mo um, data mules uh, move near to your sensor nodes take data from them and uh, send the data further to your mobile sync now what are the application area of your uh, mobile wireless sensor network so your mobile wireless sensor network can be used uh, in terrestrial also for monitoring your wildlife for object tracking for surveillance uh, it can be uh, your uh, area, your um, uh, mobile wireless sensor networks can be aerial so uavs uh, uh, are your mobile sensor networks so these can be used for uh, data gathering surveillance further it can be your underwater also for monitoring your marine life water quality etc now human centric sensing so what is the basic idea behind your human centric sensing it uh, as we see that um, humans carries various devices uh, which are embedded with various sensors so for example your smart watch your mobile phone carries various types of sensors so these sensors records your health readings or your movements or your um, play, or your playing history or your activities whatever so what are the distinct roles that are played by humans in human centering sensing so one can be your sensing targets second can be your sensing operators and third can be your data source 
so first one is your sensing target as the name suggests sensing targets mean that uh, that a particular human which is wear who is wearing the device uh, are going to be sensed so their data are going to be sensed for example you are wearing uh, your smart watch right so it is it can be used for monitoring your personal health second one will be your sensor operator so uh, the uh, sensor operator means you are going to operate those smart devices for example uh, your doctors uh, can uh, utilize your uh, personal health data and operate on upon them and third one is your data source so humans uh, can collect data um, by using the sensors um, and then further uh, utilize that for uh, updating on social media sites or for predicting their health condition and anything else so what are the challenges that we faced in human centric sensing so first one is energy of devices so these devices which we use are resource constrained devices and we have to give power to those devices second one is participant selection since in this human centric sensing uh, personal data is used so it is very required that to select the participants very uh, so in such a way that the privacy of the user will not affect now uh, the next topic is uav networks uh, uav networks are uh, is the network of uh, uav devices which are flying and it can be your mesh as well as star network for the uh, flexible deployment and management of new services using uh, software defined uh, defined network and the routing protocol which is used in your uav network should be adaptive in nature because uh, uav devices are mobile so if some problem occur and then uh, the pro uh, routing protocol should be adaptive for the smooth uh, movement of your data uh, now the fourth point is contribute toward the greening of network so your uav network should not harm your uh, nature so it uh, uh, should contribute toward your greening third uh, fourth fifth point is it should be multitasking it should cover a large area and it should be easily reconfigurable for uh, varying missions depending upon the applications yeah now the challenges which are faced by your uav network uh, since the uh, the uav devices are uh, your movable due to which the topology changes very frequently second the relative position of uav may change uh, for example if two devices two uav devices are uh, initially connected by your star topology but uh, in case of your uav the two devices the relative position of two devices may also change for uh, consider an example that uh, uav 1 is at point uh, x initially and uav by is at point y at some other point uh, their relative position may change uh, your uh, first device will be at y and uh, your uh, second device will be at some position um, z or a whatever uh, and then malfunctioning of your uav devices then intermittent link nature is one of the problem and the last problem is lack of suitable routing algorithm uh, further and there are frequent link breakages due to your um, uh, this mobile nature of your uav devices these are prone to malfunction further uh, it requires high a huge power uh, for a uav network the uav network is very complex as the routing algorithm is we are not using any particular suitable routing algorithm is not available for uav and also your the topology is also changing with time so the Uh, our network is complex further uh, it is uh, prone to environment effects also that is your wind rain uh, and maybe temperature also yeah so this is the topology uh, first one is your star topology now in case of your star topology there is one ground station and all the uav devices are connected to that ground station Uh, in case of your multi star topology there will be multiple stars uh, multiple uh, devices which are configured in star topology and 
uh, out of those multiple star topology one device will be connected to your ground station for example this is your first topology second topology third fourth uh, all of the from all the four topologies only one device is connected to your ground station now your mesh topology similar to your star topology uh, first is your flat mesh uh, configuration and second one is your hierarchical mesh configuration in case of your flat mesh configuration uh, the uav devices are uh, configured in the form of mesh topology and out of those uavs only a single device is connected to your ground uh, control station however in case of your hierarchical uh, single device is connected to your ground station and further other devices are further connected to other mesh topologies now flying ad hoc networks so what is the difference between your uav network and flying ad hoc network uh in case of your flying uh, your flying ad hoc network is the composition of your uav network the uav network which is uh, present at different layers uh, if uh, we connect all those uav networks together then it will become your flying ad hoc network so various type of communication can take place in uh, case of your flying ad hoc network it can be your interplane communication that is the communication between the uav devices that are present in the same layer it can be your intra plane communication that is the uh, communication between the uavs which are present in different layer third one can be your ground station communication so the communication of these devices with the ground station and third um, fourth one will be ground sensor communication uh, so the communication of these uav devices with the sensors which are deployed at, at your ground and uh, last one is your uh, flying ad hoc network and uh, bennett communication that is your the communication between uav devices and the vehicular network which is present over the ground so uh, these are the various types of communication that are po uh, possible in case of your flying ad hoc networks now uh, next topic is your machine to machine communication we have already discussed some things a uh, few um, things about your machine to machine communication so in case of your machine to machine communication your machines will communicate with uh, each other without the intervention of your human being for example here if uh, two uh, cars uh, if, uh, if two cars uh, crash with each other then alarm will be generated and on the on basis of that alarm uh, your hospital your doctors or uh, it can communicate with your ambulance the sensors which are present at your hospital the sensors which are where by your doctors or the uh, sensors which are present at the ambulance so that we can provide uh, services to the patients uh, automatically now uh, the features of your machine to machine communication so in case of your machine to machine communication since there are no human intervention so there should, uh, there will be a large number of nodes or devices that uh, will be present in order to cover uh, the complete area second it should be low cost third uh, the, it should be energy efficient fourth one is a uh, smart pro, uh, traffic per machine it means the data which is produced by each machine should be less because if each machine is going to produce large amount of data and uh, since there are large amount of devices present in the network then the amount of data will be large and that will result in the congestion of the network uh, now the next one is large quantity of your collective data so your machine to machine communication network should be able to handle your large uh, amount of data and uh, last one is your uh, it should be free from your human intervention now this is your machine to machine service architecture uh, which consists of various components uh, so the core network first one is your core network second one is your access network and third is your machine to machine area network so uh, your machine to machine service architecture show the communication between your core network and machine to machine area network so uh, in your core network various components are present 
for example your device user application etc which are responsible for various services uh, for example your device is responsible for the management of your devices second it will also manage uh, the device and machine to machine area network and it is also responsible for searching of the devices similarly your user component is responsible for the user profile management the authentication of the user and for charging of the devices uh, third component is your application so your application component is responsible for your data collection data control service management and connection management now the access access is uh, responsible for your app management app searching and web portal so basically their name only suggest so device is responsible for the management of device related uh, issues uh, your user is responsible for user related and application is responsible for your data and services and your access is responsible for your app management further uh, this your core network interact with your machine to machine area network with the help of access network this access network consists of various protocols which we have uh, discussed already in uh, previous uh, lectures for example your wifi zigbee wcdma etc yeah. uh, now non ip based machine to machine architecture so Uh, consider an example that uh, there is one machine to machine area network and one ip network so if uh, we want some communication between uh, these uh, ip network and machine to machine area network which is non ip based then we need some layer or uh, some device or anything you consider for uh, in in this case uh, your application layer is responsible for your seamless integ integration of your ip network with your uh, non ip based uh, machine to machine uh, architecture uh, network now your ip based machine to machine architecture so your this machine to machine area network is ip based so if this uh, machine to machine area network wants to communicate with your ip network then it will be your simple communication that take place in case of your computer networks because all the layers are same Uh, the communicate uh, all the protocols which are used are same so we don't need any uh, layer which will provide integration of these two networks yeah now we will discuss the questions of your week 4 uh, so first question is now i hope since i have discussed the summary of your week 4 lectures so i'll ex uh, expect that you will be able to give answers of these questions so uh, yeah first question is which of the following machine to machine node uh, type have no ip support first one is your low end sensor node second one is mid end sensor node third one is high end sensor nodes and fourth one is all of the above anyone so uh, there are three types of uh, uh, node types of machine to machine uh, node types there are three types first one is your uh, low end uh, sensor node second one is your mid end sensor node and third one is your high end sensor node so your low end sensor nodes are cheap and have low capabilities uh, uh, and uh, they are these are static as well as energy efficient further the deployment has high density in order to increase the network lifetime and survivability Uh, resource, uh, these are resource constrained devices and have no ip support uh, further the uh, basic fun uh, they perform uh, various functions such as uh, data aggregation auto configuration and power saving uh, last one is there uh, these are generally used for environment monitoring applications now second one is mid end sensor node so these are expensive as compared to your low end sensor nodes they have mobility they are not static as your uh, low end sensor nodes uh, they have fewer constraint with respect to complexity and energy efficiency additional uh, uh, they also uh, they provide functionality such as localization quality of service tcp ip support power control or traffic control and intelligence typical uh, application include home, uh, home network scm this is supply chain management uh, asset management and industrial automation 
लास्ट वन इज योर हाई एंड सेंसर नोट सो फॉर हाई एंड सेंसर नोट वी डोंट नीड टू डिप्लॉय दीज इन लार्ज अमाउंट दे आर एबल टू हैंडल मल्टी मीडिया डेटा दैट इज योर वीडियो ऑडियो विद क्वालिटी ऑफ सर्विस रिक्वायरमेंट्स मोबिलिटी या दीज सेंसर नोट्स आर मोबाइल फॉर एग्जाम्पल योर स्मार्टफोन्स and uh, generally these are applied to ids and military or biomedical applications so the question is which of the following m2m no type has no ip support so here we have studied that um, your low end sensor nodes are resource constrained and has no ip support so the answer is your low end sensor nodes Uh, so uh, question number 2 is which of the following is true for wireless sensor nodes if transmission range is greater than uh, two times your sensing range first one is your uh, only coverage second one is your only connectivity third one is your coverage implies connectivity and uh, fourth one is your connectivity implies coverage anyone this is direct statement which was given in your uh, lectures of your week 4 uh, no so answer is uh, coverage implies connectivity so the relationship between your coverage and connectivity is uh, your transmission range should be greater than two times your sensing range it means uh, your coverage in, uh, implies connectivity for example if your area is completely covered right then the nodes which are present in that area should be connected right if these are not connected then the, uh, it will uh, lead to some dead zone so your uh, this statement will uh, say that your coverage implies connectivity yeah uh, fourth one is your connectivity implies coverage how this statement is false see if uh, nodes are connected um, the nodes which are present in the sensing uh, that particular field are connected but uh, the density of the node is not appropriate those nodes are not able to cover the entire region then your connectivity does not imply coverage right however in case of your coverage if uh, whole area is covered properly then the nodes which are present should be connected to each other that's why we are able to cover the complete uh, field third question is which of the following structure is usually used in guided formulation of target tracking in sensor networks phase tree cluster and fourth one is all of the above Uh, so the correct option is phase next one is which of the following is not characteristics of uib network uh, first one is your intermittent uh, link nature second static uh, network topology third one is dynamic relative position of uib fourth one is none of the above this i have discussed just now so please some please answer any one no i have just discussed few minutes back okay someone is asking about network topology what static, static network topology yeah right your uav networks are not static uh, these are mobile now the next question is which of the following is a challenge in human centric sensing this i have discussed again on uh, device lifetime participant selection privacy of user all of the above anyone please ma'am participant, participant selection mm, device lifetime is not a challenge device lifetime is not a challenge yes ma'am challenge all, all of the above yeah now next question is which of the following components in m2m service platform take care of app management and app searching options are device user application access uh, yeah i have discussed this 
कम्युनिकेटिंग विथ सेंट्रल नोड सिंक नोड नेबर नेबर्स ओनली you are only answering others also please answer in multi star uav topology blank nodes uh, from each group connect to ground station 0 1 more than 1 all more than 1 more than 1 more than 1 more than 1 can connect ma'am one is also wait i'll what show you the architecture so in your multi star one of the nodes uh, from each of the group is going to connect right not more than one next is electromagnetic communication in nano network take place in blank frequency band gigahertz terahertz nanometer all of the above terahertz gigahertz Terahertz. Terahertz is right. I have given that statement in where, wherever I have discussed about your nano networks. Now, next question is which of the following is not a property of your mobile ad hoc network? And self collaborate, collaborate. So, uh, what should be instead of your self collaborate? Self customize. Self collaborate. Self customize. Self customize. Self collaborate. First answer. A. Uh, yeah. Question number eleven. Which of the following layers seamlessly integrate IP network with your M2M area network in a non-IP based uh, M2M network? Application. Application layer. Right. While maintaining sensing coverage in sensor network, a crossing is covered if it is in the interior region of blank one node's coverage disk at most one. Only one, only one, at least one, more than one. Only one node. Sure. Anyone else? It is at least one. See, if uh, there is there is one node, it means that area is covered. But if there are more than one nodes, then also that area is covered, right? So there should be at least one node present in order to cover that area. Next one is which of the following UA network topology is decentralized? Star, uh, infrastructure mesh, ad hoc mesh, and fourth one is none of the above. Anyone? Yeah, answer is ad hoc mesh. So what I can feel is whatever I have uh, taught you, you are able to answer that. But the topics which are covered in lecture, you are not able to answer those questions. Can node failure result in partition of network in mobile sensor networks? Yes, no, not applicable. Yes, 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 yes. Can node failure result in the partition of mobile wireless sensor network? It's not static wireless sensor network. It's mobile. Mm, no, no, no. It will perform chop. Answer is no because we have studied ki in case of your static uh, wireless sensor network, if a node fails, then it can result in the partition of your network. so we have proposed a solution what is the solution to that is your mobile uh, wireless sensor network so in case of your mobile sen wireless sensor network uh, it will not result in the partition of your network because there are four properties which are which we consider in case of your mobile uh, wireless sensor network which prevent uh, in the uh, prevention of your 
partition of your network and that is your chop properties configure heap optimize and please anyone self p for what are the four properties of mobile wireless sensor network ma'am configure heal hmm. and self optimize self, self optimize fourth one p for ma'am ma protect protect are you sure protect yes ma'am next one is which of the following is true for high end sensor nodes in m to m node types high density deployment Unable to handle multimedia data. Ma'am, mobility is in all all of the above. No, ma'am, mobility is essential. Which one is? Uh, so it is. Uh, it is uh, which one? Which of the following is true for high end? Yeah, mob. Ma'am, C option. C. Yeah. But I guess it is also a unable. It. Ah, uh, yeah. It is written unable to handle. Yeah, it is able to handle your multimedia data. For example, your videos, and uh, there is no requirement of your uh, high density de deployment in case of your high end sensor nodes. And so these are the questions of your week four. So please also uh, um, see your lectures of your NPTEL, which are already there, and also refer to the books because you are not able to answer the questions which uh, which I have not covered in the. summary class right so please go through the books uh, which is your introduction to internet of things uh, and second one is your industrial internet of things you, you can go uh, through that book also okay so anything else you want to discuss ma'am Ma'am, what is the difference between centralized and distributed networks? In case of your centralized network, your single node is going to your single node is going to um, monitor or manage the whole network. Whereas in case of your distributed networks, there is no single node. Uh, all the nodes are independent, and all these nodes are. Uh, um managed or synchronized uh, with the help of uh, some algorithms uh, which can be used so in case of your distributed uh, networks all the nodes which are present in the network they are uh, collaboratively working for example consider um, the case uh, where four nodes are there in a network so in case of that there is no master node however in case of your uh, centralized network there will be a master node right uh, but in case of your distributed uh, uh, network there will be no master node for example uh, if uh, that uh, four nodes are going to perform some work then how they for example they are going to select some person for uh, class monitor right so how they will perform they have to do some uh, algorithm so that all the four nodes agree to same point so they can use various algorithm for example pvft is one of the algorithm uh, this, this is your practical byzantine tolerance fault tolerance so in that case if two third of your nodes which are present in the network uh, agree to a point then we consider that result as a uh, for synchronization right so there are different kind of algorithm that uh, we use in case of your distributed network in order to agree to a particular statement however in case of your centralized there is no need for this synchronization because there is only a single uh, uh, master nodes which is going to handle all the operations which are um, going to take place in the network okay anything no, else thank you ma'am okay instead of giving answers here please unmute yourself and give answer because i am not able to see your answers at that time whenever i i, I have opened my presentation mode okay 
so anything else uh, you want me to discuss or the topics which you want me to cover in the next class any topics of week 4 that you want me to cover in the next class no then uh, yeah so yeah i'll suggest you to go through the books as well as through the lectures properly because you are not able to give the answers of the topics which i have not covered in today's uh, summary class right so please go through your lectures properly as well as your books mm, that will be enough for your exam and tests ma'am yeah Ma'am, um, IoT, IoT analytics. analytics Ma'am, we want to study. IoT analytics will be covered in upcoming lectures. So at that time we will discuss any topic okay. of week four. No, week four is clear to everyone. Then why were you not able to give answers? Okay then. Okay. Uh, ma'am, I actually joined at six o'clock, but I was not let in, ma'am. Okay. Actually, please try to join exactly at six because once I start my presentation mode, I'm not able to see whether the people are joining or not. So please. So uh, from next time, I'll wait till six three. Who will able to join? That will be okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Because some people are joining now. So, from next time, I'll wait till six three, and after that, I'll not allow anyone to join because I'll start my presentation mode, and after that, I'll not able to see who are joining and who are sending requests, right? I am having doubt in target tracking slide. Can you come again that uh, yeah. slide? Can you explain that? Yeah, sure. That push pull, push based formulation, yeah, yeah. pull based formulation, guided formulation. Um, uh, I want to understand. Uh, I couldn't able to understand this uh, target tracking. Okay. So, in case of your target tracking, what first of all, what do you mean by target tracking? Target tracking means uh, there is some object you are going to detect its position, or you are going to um, track its movement, right? So, how you are going to uh, do that with the help of sensors? So, sensors are going to detect its presence. and on the basis of that uh, it will um, collect some data and uh, some analysis will be uh, done on that data and uh, its position or its movement is detected right so there are three uh, methods that uh, we can use in order to track the target first one is your push based second one is your pull based and third one is your guided formulation so first is your push based in case of your push based uh this for example your target is here right so these two sensors which are in close proximity to this target are going to detect its presence so whenever these sensors are going to detect its presence they will send the information to the sync node and then uh, some analysis will be done on that data and its position will be detected however in case of the pole based formulation uh these sensors are not going to send the data directly to the sync node they are going to send the data whenever your sync node is going to request that data from those sensors right those sensors uh, register the presence of target store that in their storage and whenever your sync node asks for the data then only they will send the data to the sync node and further similarly some analysis 
it will be done and uh, the position of the target will be detected these two are clear clear yeah now third one is your guided formulation in case of your guided formulation there is some uh, there are some nodes uh, basically these are called beacon nodes so some particular trajectory based upon the previous data uh, they provide some trajectory so uh, the nodes will follow that trajectory in order to find that particular uh, target which we are going to track so on the basis of your previous data these nodes at your beacon nodes are uh, going to provide some trajectory that uh, your target is following that particular trajectory and on the basis of that trajectory your nodes that is your sensor nodes are going to um, detect the position or uh, track the position of your target right okay ma'am yeah. um, can you give an example of your, your guided formulation uh ha uh, yes matlab the which type of the sensor are you using push uh, based on the formulation like that see uh, you uh, sensors you can use uh, your in order to detect human you can use your ultrasonic sensors so depending upon the application you can use sir. any kind of sensors but uh, the difference is only the way the sensors are sending the data right it's not depending Hi, yes. upon the sensors which you are using so in order to detect the human you can use ultrasonic sensor you can use your camera also but it's a, the methods is based upon the sending of your data that how your data is sent by your sensors to your sync node or how your uh, target is going to be detected it's not up, uh, depending upon your uh, sensors which you are using okay okay can i ask on the next slide agriculture ah yes yeah so in case of your agriculture how your wireless sensor networks are going to be used first one is uh, to detect the condition of your soil right whether your soil is suitable for uh, the cultivation of particular crop or not and second one is to detect the uh, intruders whether some cattles uh, such as your cow or your buffalo uh, are going to enter uh, into your uh, agriculture field so in case of your first one that is your to detect the condition of your soil uh, we can use various type of sensor for example gas sensors in order to detect the um, time in order see for the cultivation of crops we require nitrogen right oxygen amount there should be particular level of oxygen that should be maintained so in order to yes. detect we can use gas sensors uh, so whether uh, the particular amount of nutrients are present in the soil or not we can use humidity sensor in order to detect whether uh, the amount of moisture that is required for the cultivation of that crop is uh, available in that soil or not so that we can do mm -hmm. with the help of your humidity sensor so by yes. using different different kind of sensor upon uh, depending upon uh, the requirement of your application you can uh, uh, check whether uh, the uh, soil is uh, suitable for your uh, for the cultivation of your crop or not and second one is your um, to detect the intruders that can uh, go into your agriculture field or not so here you can use ultrasonic sensor again you can use uh, ultrasonic sensor on the boundary of your agriculture field so if some intruder want uh, to enter to your agriculture field then your ultrasonic sensor will detect their movements and as i said that you can use wireless um, multimedia networks so uh, you can connect some camera to your uh, ultrasonic sensors so if your ultrasonic sensor detects some movements in your agriculture field it will turn on your camera and based on the pictures which were received uh, which were captured by your camera or the video which is captured by your camera you can detect uh, the intruders right okay ah uh, yes thank you okay then it's 7 i am terminating today's session so for the next time uh, till 6:3 i'll wait and after that we will start our session ma'am yeah excuse me ma'am yeah ma'am what is sync node in the agriculture example sync node is what is their work 
sync nodes work for, not for agriculture everywhere sync node work is to collect the data and send it to further uh, I, uh, to your to the device where processing will be done or to the network uh, through which uh, it is sent to the device where processing will be done so the main uh, aim of uh, using sync node is to collect data from various sensors for example, in case of your agriculture, we, uh, we are using different different type of sensor. For example, your humidity sensor, your gas sensor, or your camera. So the um, work of your uh, sync node will be to collect data from all the sensor and further send that data to the device where your processing will be done. As the name suggests, sync is jahan pe tum sab kuch ikattha daalte ho. So its main aim is to collect the data from all the sensors and uh, further send that data for processing. Right? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay.